So. Can I hear you? Uh, hello. Now it's better. <laughs> I hope. Hello. Can you hey. hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Hey, congratulations. Um, the H, H day. Yeah. H day. yeah <laughs> That's terrific. It's a great thing. It's a great thing. <laughs> so did you did, did you submit a paper already? No, no, not yet, but we we are going to. That's awesome. Yeah. Will it be about uh, Ross? Not exactly. Uh, the Ross okay. is just a runtime. So Okay. You know, like a perspective for the Kubernetes, it's not exactly about runtime. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just the use cases for the edge uh, IoT devices. Yeah. That is great. That is great. Uh, no, I was very surprised that when uh, people for, from CNCF uh, proposed to have that. It's, yeah, it's great. It's going in, in, in a good direction. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. R really looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how many do you think uh, you are expecting? Like, uh, how many people? Like uh, hundreds? I I don't know. So so we are we are we are, <laughs> yeah. we are just tracking the, the 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 papers at the moment. And here's Moritz. Hey, hey there. It does make sense to plug your microphone in, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally for us, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, so I don't have any ideas about uh, how many people will, will actually attend the, the edge day, but we, we'll know more, more information when we get closer by. Oh, by the way, Tomat, Tomatja, Tomotja, is that right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no problem. No problem. <laughs> um, I, I just saw your saw your saw your slides yesterday. Um, are you like building a, a Docker-based uh, robotic system for for Kubernetes, basically? Yeah, yeah. That that that's that's something we already did. I mean, like, uh, I mean, uh, the ROS is. Uh, as I mentioned with Dian, the mm -hmm. robotics is uh, one of the, the runtime. So mm -hmm. we don't specify the, the use cases with the Kubernetes only for ROS, but mm -hmm. the, for our aspect, that includes ROS. So okay. uh, not, not, because... not exactly specified on the ROS. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because we're yeah. building something very similar, but more specified for, for manufacturing machines, um, yeah. where, where you basically uh split up your machine into multiple microservices and you kind of like combine all the drivers in, in in multiple container runtimes um and basically control your machine in a distributed environment so so you have like yeah. one one machine for your camera system one machine for your, your other sensors one machine for your laser beam uh mm. one computer basically and then you deploy everything with Kubernetes and you have like a job controller, which kind of just talks yeah. to all of these microservices and yeah. uh, controls everything. And it works like a charm. Um, hmm. And so I was, I was really interested yesterday when I just f flicked through your, your, your slides, basically. I was like, oh, nice. <laughs> it looks quite similar. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that, yeah. <laughs> Cool. So what, what else has been going on with you guys? <laughs> we, we don't have any any formal agenda, so we can do a, <laughs> yeah, that's good. a, a, a little chat. <laughs> oh, I'm doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> There's uh I I actually uh I am based in Tokyo for now. Uh, okay. Cool. Yeah. There is a lockdown, but we're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we are, we are same for us. It's like in uh, Germany, we're still in lockdown, but 
it's all right. So, so you can still like leave the house and, and go to work and stuff like that. But uh, of course, shops are closed and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Home office is getting boring. <laughs> yeah. 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 Everybody is getting fed up with this, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's getting to the point where, where I think you are, you can't just say it's just, uh, uh, it's it's now just just basically like like um, that the lockdown is doing damage to your your industry basically, mm. um, but it, it's getting to a point where where people are getting like a little bit crazy, you know, like like <laughs> you, you get like mental problems and now you're like. Nah. <laughs> um, it's getting weird. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I got a question, uh, if I may. Uh, Dan, do, do you do you have like a information uh, or the you know like a presentation slides in the past uh, related to the IoT use cases? I am really interested in like. A, the activities in the past uh, for the uh, use cases for the HIoT with Kubernetes. Uh, yeah, we, we had something that at the beginning, but uh, let, let me try to find it. I see. But whatever. I mean, uh, whatever, no pressure. When you have it. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll send uh, it to you. Uh, yeah. Because that, that was the one of the first things that, that we did as, as, as a working group when we gathered this is try to define ah, those because because but that that was like two years ago so a lot of things changed <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> in in the meantime so so yeah i mean if if you're if you want to do a session about it i think it's, it's completely good to to have it all re revisited yeah let me let me try to find it And by the way, I also, so here's the original uh, white paper and, and it's still in, in a, like an open edit mode. I was uh, approached by, 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 uh, by, oh, by, uh, by a uh, guy from a, from a CNCF trying to, you know, or do a marketing around the edge day and he, he asked if, if you are basically willing to to finish this up and get published as, as you know a preparation for the event so that's something i i i wanted to 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 raise at, at this at this meeting i hope still still would be here but but we can discuss it discuss it anyways mm. there, there's a lot of yeah it, it would yeah, require a lot of work, but it might okay, make I sense to, to, yep. to get it in, in, into a better shape by the yep. event. Okay, I'm going to look into that. And I think we actually did did a session or, or two ab about this uh, at, 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 at the early KubeCons. But I'll try to, to, to you know, I, I gather material around it and, and, and I'll send you what, what I can found. Yeah, okay. But uh, I think the, the, the videos are, should, should be available in YouTube yeah. or something, right? Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really hope to, to, to gather some, some good sessions and, and, and get this thing maybe a, a regular thing for the future and yeah. Yep. The edge day, it, it, it'd be good. It's a shame it's, it's not a, it's a 
which will event this time, but after all this pandemic is over, hopefully we, we should get a, a physical one. That yeah, would yeah, be yeah. very, very cool. Cool. So yeah, maybe if we don't have any, any topics, we can get on with our days and, and continue yeah. communication on, on, on Slack. Yeah, yeah sure. Do, do you have okay. something? Yeah, I, I just like if you guys want to, I can show you like a, like a short video of the interaction with our system, which we just filmed yesterday, but that's pretty much sure. it. That's all I have. <laughs> I just need to like start my other laptop. Um, because one of our students just integrated our whole ecosystem basically with uh, Jupyter Hub. Uh, so you can like write, yeah, basically Jupyter notebooks to, to, to control your, your, your edge devices basically, um, which is quite nice, especially from a scientific yeah. point of view. Uh, I just need my credentials. Give me one sec. No rush. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I hope you uploaded it. I'm not like to <laughs> uh, teasing you guys and then uh, not delivering. <laughs> <laughs> Just reading about Jupyter Notebook, I, I haven't come across it before. Sorry? I, I'm just reading about the Jupyter Notebook. I, I haven't come across it before. Ah, uh, okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's like basically a, a very nice, convenient way to, to like, like write Python code in or whatever you want, basically. You can, mm -hmm. I think, even write C++ and, and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, why is everything so slow at the moment? Um, demo gods are against you. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me, let me see. Um, oh, Jesus, it's like really... Really slow right now. Maybe this works. This doesn't. Um, yeah. So, so, so what we're basically doing is um, kind of like we have like one folder with our definition files uh, for mm -hmm. our interfaces. So that's basically uh, gRPC or Open API definitions uh, so every every service in our in our environment basically has their, their own interface definition so you have for like one for camera systems one for for video cameras uh, one for sensors and so on um, these definitions can be compiled into into different classes so uh, what we do is we kind of generate uh, a container with all definitions in them out of that. So, so you kind of compile that to Python classes. Um, and you then dynamically load the Jupyter Hub into that as well. And you kind of just push that image that you just built into a registry. So now when you log in, you have you can like like um, see um, all the different um, you can access all the different interfaces. 
Uh, we have another dashboard which kind of gives you an overview of what is running in your Kubernetes cluster right now. So you we just use annotations for that just to see like, okay, this is like a like a sensor service, this is like a, a hardware service or, or video camera or whatnot. And you kind of just see like what is going on in your cluster and you get the, the IP address. And then you can just like copy and paste the the, the IP address or the, the service name of that into your, your Python code and you can just dynamically connect to that. Um, nice part about that is since you are basically running the Jupyter Notebook in the same namespace as all the services you're not trying to connect, you don't have to like manage the, the, uh, the, the, the user, yeah, the, the, the authentication because when you can lock into the, the Jupyter Hub, basically, you're authenticated that you actually are able and you're allowed to use your machine. So you don't have to worry that much about IT security. While with, when you like just open up the ports of your services, that can get quite messy. But like, uh, I mean, we have connected basically like, like machines that can cut through metal and stuff like that. And I really don't want to just open up the network ports on that, you know, like to everybody. You're just like, oh yeah, I just gRPC connect and let's go. <laughs> um, so that, that, that went a little bit, uh, it worked quite nicely, but I really, oh, there we go. Uh, I, I, I think nobody can share the screen at, at the moment because I'm not logged in as a, but if you give me a minute, I can log out and log in as, as a moderator and give you, give you permissions to. Uh, give me to, one to second. I think she didn't upload the video. Okay. Sorry. So, so it doesn't matter. Uh, why didn't she invite me? Well, uh, yeah, too bad. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, but yeah, it's like the basic workflow now is you, you have like, a, um, you can deploy your, uh, your, your containers with a, with a deployment. Um, the idea is that we might need an, our own operator for that because we want to basically select nodes in our clusters. And right now we're doing this with deployments because it actually allows that, but um, that's far from perfect because you can still do like two hardware controllers on the same machine and stuff like that. And that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, daemon sets, could work as well, but then you have get run into the problem that uh, you can't specify to have just one daemon set in your in your in your system, or you no you can't wait you can't uh, generate one service per daemon set. That's like like really weird. Uh, I, I'm not sure why Kubernetes does that, but uh, you, you kind of can't say like, or you can say like every node that has these specifications, please get this, this driver and this pod and so on. Uh, but you can't say like start their own specific service for that as well. So I can actually access exactly that node. Um, not sure why, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and from there, um, you kind of can deploy your, your, your stuff now in like seconds. So you, you just kind of say, hey, I have my Kubernetes cluster. I just connected this USB camera. Then you kind of just label it like this, this node now has this USB camera, and then all the pods get deployed, container or drivers get installed, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you're ready to go five seconds later, and then you can just type in the, the, the service IP address basically into your notebook, and you can start using your camera system for your data science workflow, basically, uh, which speeds up stuff quite a lot. Um, like normally you would, I don't know, dig into 
I don't know, 1000 pages of manuals for your hardware, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you'd probably get a new friend on, on the on the manufacturer side who's like explaining everything to you and who's like your, your hidden last for two weeks until you understand the, the, the whole system. Um, <laughs> now it's just like, oh yeah, I just deployed that service and bam, I'm ready to go. Um, <laughs> so what's the end goal? Is to have a live image or, or, or to get a snapshot or it depends on the on the on the paper uh just, just curious paper. so you're saying you integrate with the with the machine and you you get an image from the machine right uh yes or you you get an image with all interfaces of all machines running in your okay. cluster okay yeah, yeah, yeah and and then you get get the live data from yes exactly so okay. you can just like like throw up a website and you can say like i need a the, picture yeah, create a now. dashboard okay for for example yeah you can create a dashboard or you can say like i need a, a picture from my camera system and then it will actually take the picture for you and then you can do all your python magic i don't know integrate ai methods or, or whatnot and mm -hmm. start working with that and when you're done you can like say oh cool i learned from that picture that I don't know, my process is running bad, so I might need to tweak these parameters. And then you can send these parameters back to your machine and it actually incorporates that. So okay. it's like, like you can do like a whole closed loop control basically inside of Jupyter. Oh, kind cool. of like that. Um, of course it's possible to do it other ways, but it's just like super user friendly by like, you have like this web IDE and you can start doing analytics right at the spot. Um, and, and, and you can access the data directly inside the, the, the Jupyter Hub, um, which normally takes, I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you kind of run your, 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 uh, you run your experiments and um, you kind of collect the data and you have to open it up and then you, I don't know, train your models and then you go back to your machine and now it's just like everything. Yeah, clockwork. It's, it's, it's a, a, it's a work, but yeah, great. Yeah. I mean, if you could share that video. Yeah, just let me, let me, let me have a quick run. It doesn't have to be now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe later. But, but, yeah. 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 But even it, it can be a, a, a good session. Yeah, really. probably, yeah. Because now, now we are basically at the point where we can actually show, show stuff. Um, this last few months went quite busy, uh, just setting up the infrastructure, basically. And that was like the really first cool use case. Um, we already tried it with a few different um, different manufacturing setups um where you you are you for example we had like a like a little um, foil or a, what is it called foil um it's like a sheet of metal like really thin uh i think 50 microns or something like that we have like like enormous amount of of little holes in there so the laser kind of like shoots hole in that and you, you want to to create a filter with that um, the problem is that sometimes the holes don't get drilled through. Um, so you have like, like mismatches or, uh, or some kind of, of unporosities or un impurities in there. Um, so, so you kind of have like hole, hole, and then you have like a hole which is like, like not completely drilled, basically. Um, and what, what we did is just like, like taking pictures of that, then you can like detect the holes that haven't been shot through basically and just repeat them uh, and it this just, just increases the, the overall productivity or the overall quality of your products enormously with let's say 50 lines of python code something like that um, and normally somebody would implement that and i think in c plus plus and probably write his own i don't know uh, 
binary image search algorithm, um, which is probably a little bit more buggy than the one from the OpenCV and stuff like that. <laughs> and um, this is just like convenient. So um, speeds up stuff quite a lot. Um, but I'm not, not sure if that is a way you want to like control your machines in manufacturing because you kind of like have all these different moving parts. You have microservices, which are not as reliable as like a monolith architecture. Uh, you have Kubernetes running in the background, which of course is like extremely complicated. So you need more educated people to actually run these kind of systems, uh, which kind of gives us, or, or we had a nice discussion on that, I think two, two or three days ago. Um, like, like, is that actually a viable way for manufacturing systems to run? Like, uh, or is this just like way too complicated? Because, because what, what I think with, with all these edge devices is going to happen is um, you have Kubernetes basically everywhere but not everybody is able to, to, is able to actually control that or is, uh, to, to manage the complexity of that. Um, the question is if that isn't a deal breaker for Kubernetes on the edge, because it's just too complicated, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but would running just the, just the containers be enough for your use case? Yeah, yeah, so of course. But, but just just in get general, so so we kind of like mm -hmm. said, okay, cool. Like let's let's say you have like every machine in your job shop or or in your in your plant is connected to a Kubernetes cluster, and you do everything managed in the in the middle. Um, you can probably do that with a lot less people than you are actually doing right now. But of course, if you scale that up to somebody like let's say Volkswagen, yeah, who is like a massive amount of plants, um, you will not find that many Kubernetes engineers who are actually, you can actually do that. And, and, can yeah. run the, the thing. Yeah, yeah so uh, I'm a little bit worried about the brain drain basically. So um, that you just don't have enough people to actually work with that. And if Kubernetes will actually come to a point where so many people can run it and then that it's that you are this is getting like a like an operating system if you know what i mean like, like everybody can use windows and oh if it's gonna yeah. get this this operating system for edge if you know what i mean mm. um well, what's your your take on that Yeah, I, I think we, we have a, some way to go there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah. So, so what, what about these distributions that, that are, that are like K3S that, that should, or, or, you know, one node clusters and, and things like that, would that help? In, 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 in these these kind of environments where you basically have just you know you, you, you what you want you, you want a, you want an application deployment model of Kubernetes you don't want the whole infrastructure of Kubernetes running on your machine I guess right or 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 Depends. do you want one one central cluster and all the machines behaving like like separate nodes right yes that would be yeah, like yeah. perfect you know um, yeah. Of course, the security aspect of that is a little bit tricky. Yeah. <laughs> because if you hack that, you kind of like, <laughs> like take down your whole manufacturing system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm a researcher, so I can like yeah, 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 yeah. think I mean, stupid stuff. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. That's a job. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think it can be as easy as, as, as having like a, you know, single machine operating system because you, yeah. you, you know, inherently have a distributed 
distributed system, so things will break, right? And that's yeah. That, I'm not sure if like like because especially the distributed part is like it's so hard uh, mm. because things can go wrong in the unexpected places, and if you don't have people trained for that, they just don't understand what's going on, um, and it's getting and also the, the whole ecosystem is just too a little bit too broad i think because you have to like, like you have to understand first of all like docker and then kubernetes and, and that's not even like like you don't even write a programming language then you have like stuff like prometheus grpc registries maybe harbor uh it goes on and on and on and, on and it's just like pfft. yeah it's, it's a lot to consume, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, like the, the question now is like, how do you get that basically back down to, to, the, to the people who are actually standing in front of the machine who are working with that? Uh, of course, you can do everything by a web interface and kind of just like, like emulate a single node machine, which is just like having this web interface and maybe, or maybe here's like an iPad and controls the machine or, or whatnot, mm. which could be, could be quite easy to work with. Um, but, um, oh, that is actually like a really cool use case. Uh, anyhow, um, back, uh, coming back to the question is like, what people in the background do you need to, to actually to run that or to manage that and how many are they because uh, you would also like write the whole software for everything yourself right now um, for, for the infrastructure yeah for, for the infrastructure and for the drivers and for the machines so um, yeah, 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 yeah but but of course you gain like flexibility basically so yeah What was it like, like? We just had like a I don't know, I think one hour coffee talk about that. So it's <laughs> no, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, and yeah, no, noisy solutions. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, how how do they manage that in uh, in the telco? industry to, to do they i've heard that like 5g and stuff like that should be run on on kubernetes right yeah i i think the plan uh, so i i i didn't you know it, it's not my field of expertise so so i might be wrong on, on many levels but yeah i i think the idea is is to rewrite a lot of software you know so so basically all all the Telco industry started with like virtualizing the networks and things like that. So they have this system uh, like uh, for the base stations and things like that. That's all, all going to be again virtualized and, and be run as a as as, as a containers. So and and, and then that that's the point. You don't from that perspective you you don't care about the infrastructure. You you. You you assume that you will have some kind of cluster and and you know depending on on, on the use case will it be a, a, a cluster per you know per site or, or something like that and and how that workload will be delivered there is completely separated from from the actual logic of of of, of these these components for the five five G. Okay. Uh, and what are they managing? Uh, the network slicing or uh, everything? Oh. Basically. <laughs> I think basically everything. Yeah, as, okay. as far as I know. But, but yeah, so, so basically, yeah, you know, translating radios to, to data. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Then, then <laughs> many, starting from that layer <laughs> up, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like really interesting. Let me. I, I can try try to find it, and, and maybe you, you you can get some some ideas. Uh, 
from from that and and you know how can can be network network functions let me see so here's one link it's just the first uh, no it's not that's not it sorry I'll I'll try to try to find them and uh, and share it. I saw some presentations on on the topic, but it was it, it was long time ago. Yeah. Okay. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I'll get you the info. No, it's okay. I, I'll, I'll, I'll find. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just read an article. I think like eight or nine months ago uh, about the topic. You know, I was surprised that it took the telco industry actually so long to actually pick that up. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, normally they are quite fast, especially with, with that stuff, kind of like, I think so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and, and for me, like, like Kubernetes is all always sound like quite a good match, especially for like these, this problem, like some some customer calls you and want to have like this, this network slice from, I don't know, uh, Germany to India, I don't know. And then you kind of just create your rule out of that and then give it to your cluster and the cluster does its thing and just kind of like connects to all the routers and bam, 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 and then everything is basically set up. Uh, that sounds actually doable, like, I have no, no idea on how telco industry works, but, but mm. it sounds like, okay, that could work kind of like, you know. Um, I wouldn't want to manage that by hand, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> I, I think the telcos are, were heavily invested in, in the OpenStack, so, uh, so I, I guess a lot of, of that infrastructure is, is still managed like that. And, and, you know, then there's a long process of, of probably migrate, migrating that to. So, so OpenStack is, is a little bit older, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a precursor. It's, yeah, basically system for managing virtual machines. Yeah, oh, yeah okay. and then the payloads on, on the virtual machines. Yeah. So it's one. One layer top on top, yeah. Yeah, so so not containers, but virtual machines, basically. But VMs, yeah, and the workloads okay. on them, right? Yeah, and uh, in your experience, would you say that this is more uh, currently bigger or smaller? What, what do you mean? compared to, to Kubernetes, like, like what's a bigger platform right now? I think, yeah, Kubernetes overtook it in the last oh, okay. five years. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's for sure. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, yeah, I think OpenStack is now more like a, you know, le legacy thing and, and, and... Yeah. So get, got founded in 2010. And it's already legacy now. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's the world we live in. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, actually, it's actually old, right? It's like, for me, it's like a 10 years ago. So, 
Yeah. Hmm? Now, now it's Kubernetes for us. Yeah. Think. Yeah. But I think it depends on the use case. I mean, like a handling a virtual machine is more. You can have the more isolation for the system. So using container, that's that. If the, that container goes crash or make the system panic, and uh, eventually your entire system is gone. So, you know. But if you use the virtual machine, uh, you can have the isolation. So I think it depends on the use case, uh, how how secured you want to be or application or something. Yeah. I'm just thinking about like uh, like where is this could be like probably data centers, right? Like you don't want people to crash other people's applications, right? Because yep. if I control my whole system and it takes down two services, basically it doesn't really matter because it just gets restarted, right? Yeah, I think it's it, once it comes to the edge IoT devices, uh, it doesn't matter. But uh, you know, yeah. like enterprise use cases, uh, maybe enterprise databases or something. Uh, sometimes you know we we do need more isolation for that specific application. So in that case, mm -hmm. maybe. The answer is like a virtual machine, not container. Yeah, yeah. I think it's always trading off. So, but the most likely, the application services uh, running on the Kubernetes these days. So, yeah. As Dan said, I think uh, the Kubernetes took over most of the use cases. I think. Yeah. Has ever, ever, uh, anybody worked with that? You did. What do you mean, like a open uh, like, like with OpenStack, like like how does it feel compared to to? to I did. I have done. I have not done the com compare uh, between Kubernetes, the open OpenStack, but I was working on the OpenStack. Like uh, that's a long time ago, seven or oh. eight years ago. Yeah. I don't have any, 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 any direct experience here. Yeah, yeah. I, I, as far as I see, you know, like uh, for me, it's totally different thing because uh, the use case is different. So uh, mm. it doesn't get excluded for each other. So maybe some yeah. use case that you still do use uh, OpenStack or something. Yeah. Yeah, because I can, can remember like, like when I started getting into all the, the cloud Cloud infrastructure stuff, basically, when was that? I think three years ago or something like that. Um, especially coming from an engineering or mechanical engineering point of view, I, I was just like drowning in information. Um, and uh, I think containers, container wars were still on. So you had like, uh, what was it, Mesos? Uh, with, with, with Marathon and you had like Kubernetes with Docker and you had like OpenStack and like I, I felt like every week a new framework came out and I was like, oh Jesus. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I luckily picked the right one. <laughs> so I'm just sitting here yeah. today. <laughs> I think the main reason that the container took over the infrastructure is like a, using container provides us a good uh, friendly for you know like it's really so friendly to the application engineers yeah so it's easy so application yeah. engineer just cares about container and push it and everything is done and the rest will be taken care of by kubernetes and uh, i mean like as simple as that so the application engineer is the key to provide a service so yeah yeah yeah, yeah, that's 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 what I what I thought at the beginning. Like, like yeah. you have like a really nice abstraction of, of the hardware, yeah. right? Um, and it kind of appeals to people. And normally, the people that that kind of like the developers make the technology decisions. So, yeah, to take yeah. over. That, um, that's exactly something I want to do on the edge IoT devices. Yeah, the application yeah. engineer friendly. So that's once the application engineer write the application, the container and done. That should be run yeah, any yeah, anywhere. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. have to be the edge or cloud anywhere. So, so you tell me that you don't like reading one thousand page manuals before running your application or what? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> 
come on. <laughs> That's all yeah, but, but I think, you know, like, uh, we, 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 it's a huge burden for the application engineer because yeah. uh, every single yeah. time the platform changes or product changes, they have to integrate their application. It's basically the same thing, but it takes yeah. time to integration. So we, we, we don't like to do that. Nobody does. So if we support container on the HIoT devices, uh, that can be done. It's done. So uh, yeah. you are the application engineer, just to give me container and how I will deploy the application. <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, it's, it's so funny that this actually happens because um, we, like in the laser industry, like we don't have a lot of people who can actually program really good. Um, and in the, in the German industry, there's like this one guy. It's just like, I, I, I'm not even sure if I should say that on camera, but um, it's like this one guy who basically implemented all uh, hardware controllers, like, like moving axes, uh, controlling yeah. lasers um, for pretty much every uh, vendor there is. So it doesn't matter if you, if you go to Bosch or if you go to Siemens or, or whatnot. He has them implemented already. So, so this is like this is one guy. I think it's like a like a, a company with two people, and he's basically doing the framework for ninety percent of the German industrial laser industry. So, so it's like this one guy who who writes the software for ninety percent of the laser manufacturing machines that are sold today. So, so like laser cutters, uh, 3D printers, uh, ablation machines, all the same dude. It's, it's, it's crazy. So, so, so like, I just imagine this guy getting hit by a train. We're fucked, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, like exactly the problem. This guy put the time in, basically, to, to, to read all these manuals to like, like get Get his get his his knowledge to like how all of that different stuff works. He knows like okay when I want to connect to Bosch axes, I need to do like da, 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 da. Um, he he has written all of that code for himself, and now he can can like save that. Um, but that's not a viable way, you know. Like 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 if you want to change something, and this guy's you, you can't get this guy on on the telephone. Thanks to be you, you have to wait three months. Hey, <laughs> because you're not going to implement all of what he did in like two weeks. I don't know. Yeah, that's not a scalable model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not at all. <laughs> hey, Dina. Hey, everyone. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Okay. We are basically approaching the, the close of the meeting. It, it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. Is it showing on your calendar that it starts now or? Yeah. Never mind. Yeah, she's muted. Yeah. <laughs> Great to hear you. Yeah, cool. I mean, there's a lot of talks going on about about you know, yeah, uh, manufacturing and 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 the, and the cloud native and and the edge computing. So yeah. something will come up out, out, out of there. There's a lot of interest. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> hey, okay. Cool. Yeah. So approaching the, the top of the hour. So Moritz, I, I promise you to find you a little bit about the Telco Edge, right? Yeah. I will promise uh, you to send the, the video around. The, the Jupiter, yeah? Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. the takeaways. Uh, perfect. <laughs> to do <laughs> for, for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. Cool then. Yeah. See you around on, on Slack yeah. and See ya. Talk to you Thank later. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.
Thank you. Thank you.